Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mwikali. Now, that song is called Be Brave by Sarah. The second name, I'm just going to try. Hopefully, they can say Mwikali nicely. Sarah Berelius. Way I tried. The R's and the L's in there. Karibuni Sana, remember, talk to us. Triple one, triple four, triple one. It's just a shilling. And uh, Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on um facebook right now though we have a gentleman he's an artist he's a poet he's a uh manini mental health advocate he's the ambassador of healthy masculinity and he is very loud about it he's a personal friend i've known him for so many i think about eight years now and i'm excited that we're here together i haven't seen him in a while eric onyango welcome to the show aka rick Sport. Just in case I just go with sports, <laughs> Michelle Distema Mapema. Welcome yeah, to the show. Sana, Mikali. Nice to see you. You know, the first time I met you, it was just poetry. Yeah. It was just an artist, and you were loud even then, yeah. just doing poetry. And that was about eight years. And I'm, I'm telling you, the very first man who ever took me to, well, human, man, human, <laughs> whoever, just in case, you know, these blogs, <laughs> whoever took me to a poetry gig was you. Yeah. And that was in 2012 at the junction yeah it's a long time ago long time ago yeah things have changed so much even names i have to refresh every time i see you on <laughs> social media i'm like huh <laughs> oh export okay yeah, yeah. how yeah. have you been whoa that's a loaded question i know very <laughs> loaded but wow. well the good thing is we've seen the transition on facebook from just a poet mm. um to so many other things and changing lives and talking about things that usually men do not they're just like ah we were conditioned we, we were brought up to not expose ourselves in this way and you are here now saying that i will expose myself for all the men out there who are not willing to do so mm. I'll give you a story. Uh, okay. So in 2015, my parents were fighting. Um, they've been fighting for a long time. So in 2015, I decided I'm a firstborn in my home. Yeah. Um, I decided, you know what? I'm really fed up with these fights. So I'm going to call my parents to a meeting. Oh, wow. Which is a suicide mission here. And, um, you know, I called my mom separately, my dad separately. And I mean, me and my mom talk. So with my dad, it was a risk because I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, you were going through, you know, like yeah. physical abuse with him when yeah, you were younger. Exa- yeah, so How are you even having the yeah, courage? Exactly. How are you being so brave? <laughs> <laughs> to call my dad to a meeting. It yeah. was like crazy. So I was like, you know, you guys need to set, sort your mess up, man. I can't imagine my family disintegrating because of issues I think you guys can actually solve. Okay. <sighs> and so, I mean... <sighs> It was a difficult meeting with my dad. He said a lot of hard things. But one of the things that stuck with me most, he said, I, and I quote him, I don't come to you with my problems because you'll think I'm weak. Oh. That changed my life. That, were those, that sta- statement changed yeah. my life. Yeah. Because it hit me in a way, I was like, oh, so... Y- I mean, in your eyes, you think I see you as a perfect person because you don't come. T- yeah, you mm. could don't come to me with your problems because I'm your child. I'm supposed to see you as this father, this God. Yes. I mean, I've lived here. I was, I think, 27 or younger at that time. I mean, I've lived with him all my life. I can see his weaknesses, whether he tells me or not, right? I can see his struggles, whether he tells me or not. Yeah. So him speaking them out or not does not mean I don't see, right? Um, but what struck me most about that statement was I imagined how much pain must this man be in for him to say such a thing to his child, Yeah. you know, and it was the first time I started humanizing him because I wanted to heal myself, but I understood from that statement that I had to understand him first before Mm. getting to me. Right. And that meant studying his life, you know, so it meant me to go back. Mm -hmm. to see oh so this is how he was also brought up this is the kind of environment he grew up in so these are the traumas he inherited which by design i was supposed to inherit and that's why he was violent at home so how was i you you know you you can only heal a pain you understand Mm -hmm. so many of us struggle to heal pains we don't understand you have to go back to the root of where the problem began and that was the journey that's how it began for me so it made 
it gave sense to my journey, my healing journey. Yeah. And even though, like, I, underst I understood how he would act, I just wouldn't excuse it. Yes. You get? I get you. Yes. I get, yeah. f but for you to walk this journey, you had to leave or to understand where he was coming from. And you had been leaving at home experiencing the pain and not being able to voice it out because i mean we were not told to voice it out to just mm -hmm. keep it in especially as a man yeah. you needed to be brave for society for your mom for your siblings and never show your dad that oh i'm a weakling and stuff like that and you went through quite a traumatizing um you know upbringing or childhood yeah. but you still had to go through it again if you wanted to heal you just wanted, yeah you had, yeah, to you had to face all that you know um i mean my parents like I wish they had a, a better marriage and um you know it was like so much chaos there are good times for sure yeah but there was there was so much chaos and um you know my my dad was also really like really violent and most m people think you know when i talk about these things i, I hate him um, but I actually talk about them because I'm I'm, a, I'm a in a better place now. I don't speak of you know spite or hatred or yeah. you know. I actually really really love him. I also want him to heal the way the same way I'm healing. Yeah. Um, but I speak of these things because they are happening in our homes and we are quiet about them. And children are dying, man. People are showing up in work, but they are struggling with traumas, things they went through when they were 12 years old. Their dad yeah. did something to them. Their mom did something. An uncle did something to them. And we are just you know this culture of silence. That's what I couldn't hold. In, you know because I felt at some point in my life that if I don't speak up I'll actually die there was so much pain yeah. Kali, it's so much pain I was like oh at least just because I'm a boy at least <laughs> so I'm supposed to keep all this die for society for what for the longest time you kept quiet until you came to realize that I have to speak up about yeah. it because it was sort of like suffocating you yeah. and um, you have shared a bit like I follow you like mm -hmm. I'm one of those diligent and sometimes you're very ballsy okay fine what did I say <laughs> so uh, yeah. um, you talk about your you ex you share your life to heal mm -hmm. that i went through this and as a child you also went through you know sexual abuse as yeah. well which you talked about and yeah. you know guys are just <laughs> like uh <laughs> <laughs> eric gk <laughs> yeah how yeah. old were you when that happened i was 20 years old um the circumstances in which it happened is uh, this was our house help or our house manager at home and um, she took advantage of me uh, because I was used to being abused okay. so much that um, the, you know, the brain function that would help me cope with abuse was something we call dissociation. So dissociation is this thing of something is happening to you and then you take yourself from that moment until Ishe you know just so that yeah. you can survive that moment yes. and it happens a lot with actually a lot of rape survivors um, or if you live in a place where this high insecurity like you're so used to seeing this thing until it's almost like mm. it's not part of you mm. anymore so mm. you dissociate from it right yeah. so for me it was like that like i was so used to being under threat so much that when when i was facing danger i i never ran away i was just i froze so the brain function is freezing, you freeze, you know, um, and then you let that thing happen and then you go back to yourself later, right? If you'll still be alive, that is. Yeah. So, um, you know, I w uh, it was a period I was, I, I did my form five and six in Uganda after all levels here. Um, so it was that period of transitioning from form five to form six. And in the Ugandan system, uh, we'd close school from late November to late January. Ah. So when Kenyans are going back to school in January, I was at home, okay. right? And uh, my mom brought in uh, a new house help at the end of December. So in January, we were just the two of us at home and she was older than me. And, you know, I had never had sex before. Um, I had, I had experimented with masturbation and porn and stuff like this, and a lot of boys shy away from talking about these things. But we do it. You're pretty loud about it. Yeah, oh man, it's <laughs> like this is our everyday life. Why are we so shy about oh, it? Oh goodness! Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, because there's <coughs> really poor sex education, um, comprehensive sex education in our communities, so people experiment with the wrong things, mm -hmm. and then. Um, there is high rates of abuse and even boys face a lot of abuse in their yeah. childhood. Um, so this person uh, took advantage of me and, uh, you know, she forced me to have sex with her. 
um and so so many people ask so how is that possible for a man hey you know did she force i have seen those comments <laughs> and you don't keep them you you jibu them the way they come yeah. and it's it's what happened to you yeah it, it, i can't explain what happened to you i'm a what you do i'm a what you experienced but yeah. i'm talking about what i felt because yeah. you were not mentally prepared yeah. ready or yeah. did not understand what was happening to you yeah. and y it happened to you yeah that is the truth that's mm. the bottom line yeah and we are going on a break. I can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> we are going on a break right now. We will be right back. This is Full Circle with Mikali. Eric oyango will still be in the building. For all the questions that you may have, if and as a man, things that you're struggling with, things that you've been told to just hold in and not talk about them, this is it. Safe space. Talk to us. We'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. This is Full Circle with Mwikali. Eman James and Asema Mwikali Mary. I didn't know masculinity is the opposite of femini femininity. Way. Roles, reversal, weak, effemin effeminate, emasculated, feminine men. And masculine, toxic, empowered, liberated, aggressive, independent, we men. The way well, Mukali, what's happening? The dangerous thing is 59% of those with toxic masculinity are asymptomatic. A lot of women encourage the feminization of men, yet they want a manly man. Then you will hear them complaining, all men are trash, all men are dogs, all men are the same, and blah, 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 blah. I'm afraid I'm not toxic enough, not suffering. <laughs> you told me you saw this before. What do you think about this particular post? Well, I understand this pain. Mm -hmm. I think it, that's pain talking. I yeah. understand this pain. And it's, it comes from the same pressure that a lot of men are having with navigating their emotions. Okay. Because there's a way society wants us to be. Um, and, you know, women are also part of society. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you come across people who want you to show up as this idealized manly person and mm. maybe you're not mm -hmm. and so uh, a lot of men think oh so women want us to be like them to be you know feminine and all that yeah um, but that's not but the that's case not the truth. yeah that's not that's not the case mm -hmm. um, it, it's because we've been raised to live on extremes if you're not masculine then you're feminine right um, uh, there's a poet in 1832 called um, Samuel he said that a great mind must be androgynous. So androgynous is like you have um, like um, the respect of both feminine and, mm -hmm. and, and masculine. Mm -hmm. And I think all human beings are that. We just have maybe, you know, um, hormones that, you know, rely on this side more, yeah, this side, this side the more. Side. But balance is what is healthy for anybody. Okay, just, and what yeah. is that? What If you could just probably in a statement just be like, this is what healthy masculinity is about. You know, it's it means it's very personal. Yes, it's very personal for so many people. But the bare mi the bare minimum should be, you at least have respect for yourself as a human being. Okay. You have uh, accepted who you are as a person, and for you to get to accepting who you are, it means you have to you have done a lot of the inner work. To you're conscious about who you are. You're aware about who you are. Your capabilities, your your thought processes, your worldviews. You're aware about them, and you can, you can express them in a healthy way. Okay. The bare minimum is also respect for other people. Mm -hmm. Respect for other people's rights. Respect for other people's spaces. Respect for other people's dignity. That is bare minimum. So, and that is bare minimum for all human beings. Okay. Right. So you, it's only that you take the shape of a man. You have the genes of a man. That's the only difference you have. Yeah. But because we live in a world that is made up, uh, made up of politics, mm -hmm. and politics is what um, has defined who a man is, is supposed to be, gender roles, yeah, and who a woman is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We are all soaked up in that because from the moment you are born and it's discovered you have a penis, yeah. you're given a script. Yeah. That script is what you're forced to live by mm -hmm. until you get old. You get older and then you start getting confused. But the world is telling me this, I feel this way, yeah. I can't fit here, so what am I going to do? So more men uh, keep silent with those, those issues. And, you know, it is not a mistake that um, globally, 
uh, suicide rates are higher on men. It's not a mistake. It's yeah. it's designed to be like that because if you grow up, you've you've Botting. soaked everything inside you. It doesn't work for you. Even if you are an animal, it mm. it doesn't work. <laughs> like, you're gonna explode at some point. Yeah. yeah. You started talking about this. You have a podcast as well, yeah. and. As a result, many men have come out. Even mm -hmm. I see that on your post on Facebook, yeah. where men will just come up and share their stories. Has that changed from when you began, from the bashing year, where they uh, mm. I, I do not like this, please. <laughs> and everybody who says it around me, yeah. I sort of like, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wrong. What yeah. are you talking about? What, 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 how are we? Yeah. See mama? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Actually, even as you mentioned that, I remember like my boy's circle. Yeah. Um, because, you know, for me to even, uh, interestingly, for me to get to where I am, I had to to learn about feminism first. Because okay. I loved seeing the way women would organize, the way they would meet, the way they would talk. And I was like, these guys is really support each other. I don't see men doing the same for, for, for each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I remember like sitting my boys down and telling them, so in our circle, nobody's going to say you mama here. It's no. And. You Ends know. here. Yeah. And everybody understood it. And, you know. Every like these days when like they hear anything about women's rights, they post for me on the group like <laughs> 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 Ambassador. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, it's because when you stand by your ground, people respect that as well, yes. right? Um I, I think I've lost track you, you had a you know, Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> forgot people like men the rate yeah. of men coming out at oh, first yeah. when we started talking yeah. they were like ha look at yeah. this one yeah. but then later on has the number increased in terms of how men open up and share what it is that they're feeling mm. so the number has definitely increased because yeah. i have kept repeating the message yes which is so hard but there mm -hmm. it's not easy mm -hmm. um and then the bashing is still there yeah you know the good thing is i am a trained storyteller and I'm a trained, uh, like, you know, digital storyteller as well. So I understand the dynamics of that backlash online and how people would come at you. Mm -hmm. I understand how to deal with cyberbullying. I understand how to, to deal with all that. Okay. Um, and I'm very grounded with who I am. I'm so centered. Like, there's nobody, something will, nothing, somebody will just tell me. And then, so now I believe you. <laughs> oh, so, gee, oh, so now oh, I won't even eat. <laughs> well, come on, you know. And if anything, any negative things people tell you mm -hmm. say more about who they are than, than who what they're you projecting are. to you. Yeah. Uh, so if you know who you are, there's nothing you can't do on this earth. That's you know? true. They're yeah. just projecting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Wikali. Okay, this is our SMS line. Triple one, triple four, triple one for just a shilling. You can send in your questions and your concerns as well because... Eric Onyango Otieno will definitely be handling that. Uh, hi, Mikali. Literally, I was thinking about the topic masculinity this morning, and I'm happy it's in the discussion. But my question is, is masculinity defined by how vulnerable a man can be? And as ladies, how do we handle it at the same time not hurt their ego? Mm. Masculinity is defined by how vulnerable a man can be to himself. To himself. It has to start from inside. Okay. Now, the way we are socialized, uh, men are socialized to exist outside the home, go, work, da da yep, da da yep. Women are socialized to exist in the home, mm -hmm. right? Uh, cook, do all these things for him, and the children mm. be a caregiver in nature. Um, so you find that men for the longest time have depended on women to do emotional labor on their behalf. Right. I come to you at home. I expect you to cater for my emotions. I expect you to do everything because the world has been beating me up out there. Mm. And out there is actually richer men who've been beating me down. You get? Yeah. Um, so I come back here. I'm, I'm expecting a softer life, uh, you know, softer gentler landing, side you of know? things, yeah. you know, which, you know, because of the socialization of women, they've been offering that. Mm -hmm. But because it is unsustainable for the long haul. Mm -hmm confrontation is always there yeah. right so you you have to have a sense of belonging within your own self within your own body as opposed to expecting it as a man ex expecting it from women all the time yes. so that is why when a, a man is denied sex by a woman he gets violent because he actually thinks he's entitled to that uh, yeah. space mm -hmm. um uh, Chalia kikatia dem dem amkatai anamtukana. Mm, Atu kuangi mrembo. Atu sijui. You know, ni kwa sababu 
sayo ameshindwa there's no other way to get at this person i have to make them feel like they're nothing yeah. but yet i wanted them you see it yeah. doesn't make sense at all no. so it's about I the integration and you have within yourself okay. so a man you define a man by how he knows himself not how much he's vulnerable to other people yes. right because by design if you know who you are if you're vulnerable to yourself it's easy to communicate that to other people okay. whether they're children whether mm -hmm. they're in your colleagues whether mm -hmm. they're women and, and so forth and as ladies how do we handle it at the same time not hurt their ego that's that's a very <laughs> gray area because for me i know the conversation about ego exists because of how men have been for the oh, longest, for the longest time. Yeah. time or what we've been told they yeah, are or yeah or yeah exactly what we've been told they are so it's like women are also trying to protect us from being harmed you know i don't want to hurt him because hey, if i tell so him this jobs and over here nikimwambia hivi atafilivi nikisema hivi nini unajua na ume ni nini no, for me, if we work to create safe spaces for mm -hmm. all people, boys and girls, yeah. or gender non-conforming persons, LGBTQIA, all those guys, if we create, if, if, if you look at me, Mwikali, and you see a human being who has emotions, who needs to express himself, and I see the same for you, yeah. We have a, a common space where we f we both feel safe to express ourselves. Oh, so, so even that ego conversation won't be won't there be, anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the thing is, I might be with you here, okay? But when I go outside, I'm still part of society. Mm, you okay. get? Yeah. So society still influences how I see myself outside our space. That is where majority of the work is. Okay. Because we exist in society outside our homes, right? Okay. That's where the emotional labor is. So yeah. if you crack that, if you crack the fact that People will always see you in some, some type of way. They will always have demands over you in some type of way because yeah. you're a man, you're a woman, you're a child, and all those things. If you walk through that, I think we can break this ego conversation. That's true. Yeah. I love how you've break, broken it down nicely yeah. for everybody to understand. You use all the spaces that you get to spread your message. And you haven't started today. Your yeah. uh, mind-provoking <laughs> poetry <laughs> started from back in the day. Yeah. And somehow along the way, I keep forgetting you're a poet and that's <laughs> originally how I know you. Yeah. And uh, you have a piece for us today. Sure, yes. Great. Yeah. It's that time. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, do I your camera is right here? over here. All right. Ah, my word. So this is a little intense. Okay, let's um, hear it. So open your heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there. Yes. Uh, so this poem is titled, Come Out Boys. I wrote it um, in October last year. When I was young, daddy would leave for work in the morning and come home with meat. He'd take me for walks, holding my hand and I'd sit on his lap as he read the newspaper. When he was happy, he'd buy us one liter soda and Britannia biscuits. On Sunday, we were the holy family singing in church. He was God to me. Putting me on our living room table, tell me to dance for him. Always composed, a man of few words, sometimes coming home staggering, carried by his friends and i thought maybe this is what fathers do this is what it is to be a man stay composed speak few words stagger home once in a while carried by your friends but as i grew he became angrier and distant no more walks, no more music, don't dance in the house it's time to read why do you fail this subject you're foolish like your mother the pain of separation from daddy's love felt like death. How could God deny me? How could he choke my mother and stomp my head with his feet as though he was killing a snake? Did I remind him of the devil? Mother tried to hold it together, but you miss some things when you're, when you're in pain. It happened. One day I was 15, noticing girls in the neighborhood thinking if I could get one to like me, to notice me. I was going to be happy, but you know, my kind of sadness could not, could not be kissed away. 
Growing up glued to telenovelas and dramatic soap operas with women lasting over rich men with overspread chests was our social classroom. You end up believing the bigger your muscles, the better your mind. Wait a minute. Mind? There was no mind. We just wanted to have fun, get girls, be rich, unwind. But the rich guys died, leaving all their wealth behind. The girls, the ranch, the, their children became beggars. It was just so confusing. What was it about men? They seemed to be happy only for a short time. One day, Daddy said, I don't come to you with my problems because you'll think I'm weak. And I sat there thinking, what do you do when the heat is too much? Where do you take your pain? Who do you talk to? Many years later now I see he was taught to suppress. When you're angry, suppress. You're in pain, suppress. Don't know what to do, suppress. Suppress, suppress, don't express. Stay composed, speak few words, stagger home once in a while, carried by your friends. It all makes sense now. People don't get it. Suppression is delayed expression. It goes inward, it finds a way out. We grew afraid to be intimate because we are never sure what will happen if we say our truth. Yet the truth is, you don't genderize emotion. You don't seclude yourself from feeling. I'm telling these boys, intimacy doesn't have to be sexual. You've got to open up a little. Ask ourselves to what route are we holding each other accountable. There's nothing to lose. It's just fear. I'm telling these boys, the quiet champions who brave the darkest nights of shame, battling their traumas with their dreary feeling of reproach, abandonment, rejection, on tight skin and teary eyes. This is for the boys who are told they're too emotional, too sensitive, suppressed by the dead society of wounded men they called fathers, all their lovers, all friends whose bro code they didn't want to break. This is for the boys who know they have something within them they don't have a name for, a light no darkness has penetrated a fire they have traveled with in the pockets of their precious hearts since 12 unseen misunderstood isolated ignored profiled emotionally vandalized by a stray humanity I'm telling these boys the village tots and township lads still innocent and raw in their hidden secret worlds, crafting their soft and brassy dreams in the chaos of horrific silence. Come out, come out. It's your time to give birth. Come out, boys, come out. What? What? Good morning. Whew, you warned us though, you did. You <laughs> gave us a warning, you did, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, I didn't want to do it in the middle. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming through, Eric, Appreciate and for sharing your story over and over again and not getting tired and taking the backlash on behalf of so many men out there and having this conversation going because it's not just for the men. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. also for the woman yeah. to understand and be able to be like, to allow, mm -hmm. even as we become mothers, to bring up our children different, our boy child different. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Social media, I'm mm -hmm. sure you talk to so many guys out there. Yeah. And if you are out there and you're looking, seeking to speak up, I'm sure Eric is the guy for you. Mm -hmm. How can they get in touch with you? So I'm available on Facebook at uh, Onyango Otieno. The name you're struggling with right now. Yes, I know I am <laughs> struggling. Um, or uh, Twitter, Rick's Poet, R I X. Thank God, it's paid. Yeah. yeah. Um, Instagram, the same, Rick's Poet. So I opened up a safe space for uh, men who've been sexually abused before. Um, so it's like uh, a safe space I run for them and I take them through therapy. Uh, so it's something like I've also been fundraising for just to, because it's very difficult uh, for many people to understand that men go through abuse, yeah. sexual abuse. Yeah. Know? So there are so many of them and they're so quiet and they, they don't know where to go most times. Yes. Um, so that's, those are, you know, some of the projects I'm, I'm handling. Um, okay. And also like, you know, um, uh, take through ther people therapy, therapy, 
t uh, for people who've been through some kinds of trauma. Okay. So yeah, I'm like, just How calling out. How can they out. join that space? They, they talk to you directly. Yeah, just yeah. When talk you, you find directly? me online, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you respond to all of them. He's yes. quite like online. -y, <laughs> if all that's the time. a thing. <laughs> yeah. Rick, thanks for coming. Santi, we call you. God bless you. I appreciate Keep you. Keep doing you. Santi. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, how about steak for breakfast? This is Full Circle with Mikali.